Hey everybody, how you doing? Last Outrider back, and now I'm going to talk about one of my more favorite creatures of 40k, vampires. Yes, I said it. Vampires in 40k. Here are the rules. The ancient legends of old earth were for long ages discredited as invention, folklore, and myth. The reality, however, was to prove far more disturbing. Vampires are polymorphic entities able to change their metabolism in order to resemble the creatures amongst whom they live. Their natural shape, if it can be called such, is bat-like, although approximately human-sized. In other words, big bat-like. Vampires exist within the societies of most established intelligent races. Yes, that means there are orc vampires, Eldar vampires, Slan vampires, well, why not? Um, Gretchen vampires. Crazy. True. Um, <coughs> and often assume positions of authority. They naturally crave for power amongst the intelligent races, regarding even fellow vampires as threatening rivals. They have no home world. Where they evolved and why they have come to occupy a parasitic position within alien societies is unknown. Vampires live amongst their chosen race after the manner of that race and cannot easily be singled out. They have psychic powers of a level comparable to humans. Vampires maintain their lives by absorbing the life force of other creatures, achieved by prolonged physical contact. A simple combat blow will not suffice. Life force is drained in the form of willpower and if the victim is a psyker, psi points. Victims drained of all willpower will die. Psi points may be recovered as normal, but willpower may only be recovered if the host is permitted D10 days of complete bed rest, after which one point is recovered for each subsequent day's rest. Fortunately, Vampires can derive some substance, sustenance by normal eating and drinking, and so only require a little stolen vitality to survive. If a victim is completely drained of willpower, it can be revived, and listen to this very carefully, people, it can be revived as a zombie. A willless servant, completely under the vampire's control. Zombies are corpses and will slowly rot and decay until their usefulness becomes somewhat limited. Creating a zombie is not something casually undertaken. The fighting characteristics of a vampire is as follows. Movement 4, weapon skill 6, ballistic skill 6, strength 5, toughness 5, wounds 3, initiative 6, attacks 3, leadership 10. The vampire must drain at least one point of willpower, or psi points, from a living host every day. If this is not done, vampires will lapse into a catatonic state and can only be revived by the sacrifice of a member of the host race conducted over their sleeping form. 
<laughs> to drain its victim, a vampire must establish close physical contact with the host over a period of at least one minute. The vampire must then roll greater than his victim's willpower to drain up to d6 points of willpower or psi points. Points cannot be stored from day to day. At least one point must be drawn every day. A vampire drawing more than one point may add the surfeit to his own psi points, which may increase the total over the normal psi level. Vampires have psychic powers. Determine psi mastery and details of powers in the same way as for humans and other psychic races. Vampires may recover psi points in the normal way as well as draining energy from their victims. Are we getting trippy enough for you? <clears throat> Shapeshifting. In a natural ability of vampires, they, have, they are able to assume the shape of any familiar human-sized creature. The transformation takes d6 turns to complete. Once transformed, the vampire gains physical abilities associated of the creature such as being able to fly, swim, or even hover, etc. The vampire does not gain any of the creature's psychic powers or special attacks. The vampire's characteristics remain unchanged. Wow. 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 I hope you enjoyed that. Until next time. Bye.